Yeah, I was a lawyer on Wall Street, and then I got a blood clot and kind of had this wake up call experience of like, what do I really want my life to look like? Decided to take a leap and leave that job and pursue something I was passionate about. So then I started taking vocal lessons and started writing songs and I do some legal work on the side now, but like trying to devote myself primarily to singing. And you got, so you got a blood clot, you got a blood clot and then decided that you were going to follow your passion for music. I've always loved music. As a child, I sang a lot. My dad's actually a really amazing singer, so I grew up around it, but it's nothing that I had thought about. You know, the way I was raised, it's not really like a option really to consider as a profession. So it was never even really, I decided I think in sixth grade that I would just be a lawyer because I like writing and research. And so I kind of just stayed on that path from then on. And then had this moment of like, you're living this life where, you know, you might get to do some cool things, meeting so many people who love what they do too. It's so amazing, like, especially since I moved here and there's such you know, the community of musicians. It's really cool. So the difference between working on Wall Street and now working with musicians, I, it has to be so different for you. Yeah, I love it. I mean, the, the reality is just when you're working in the Wall Street environment, you just are working all the time and you just have no, outside life. So I love New York and it's great now visiting, but when you have to work to actually afford to live there, it's really hard to take advantage of any of the awesome aspects of the city and people all have jobs like that. So it's hard to even really see your friends and things like that. And I mean, the music community is great because people are working and also seeing their friends all the time. And it's just such a more social experience. So it's, it's a great change. Everything about it is really positive. Well, great. That's good. So I got to hear one of your singles that you have released. And how many have you released now? Is it just one or two? Two so far. The third one's coming out on um, next Friday. My plan is six singles before the end of the year. Um, then we'll see what happens next year. Right now, they're not, they don't really make sense necessarily to be together as an album. Um, so for now, they're just going to be singles. And since, you know, I'm still building up kind of the social media and all the other stuff. It's kind of nice to sort of put things out and test out different, they're different genres, they're kind of different things and just see how it goes. I noticed in the track that you sent me most recently, it had some beautiful piano work in it. Is that you or do you have some masterful behind the scenes phantom working on all this beautiful music? Oh yeah, no, the musicians, none of the instrumentation is me. Um, that one is actually, I think probably a combination of Steve Zirkel and Jeff Botta. Um, they do the keys on my various songs. But yeah, it's, it's actually, we first recorded that song two years ago. Um, and it's been since then for me to get happy enough with the vocals and everything. But yeah, they did great work on the instrumentation from the beginning. And then we added the strings, which was also really fun. Um, Dave Madden did the string arrangement. Tell me a little bit about the song. like. Can you give me some insider information as to like why you wrote it? What is it about? For me, the song is kind of about finding the place that you feel at home. You know, I personally didn't really feel at home where I grew up. Um, and it wasn't until I moved to New York that I really felt like, okay, this is the place I'm supposed to be. Um, so for me, it's just kind of like that journey of finding your way to the place where you, and finding your own independent identity, kind of growing up, all of that. So that's why I like, when I did the video, I kind of contrasted like growing up scenes and New York scenes. So it's, I mean, it's a tribute to the pandemic art that's being created right now. It's, you're not alone. There are lots of people creating things in different ways that they probably wouldn't have done it previously. Um, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play your song. So is there anything that you'd like to say before I click that play button? I don't think so. Thank you for having me. What's in a name? What's in a home? Who gets to say where it is you're from? But nothing makes sense in that. 
everything stays the same. When the world appears so small, starts closing in to a dot on a map. Every turn you could take. another beautiful song you're putting some beauty out in the world thank you well thanks so much for being on the show Roxana we we love that you're a brand new artist in Austin I love so much that you're branching out and starting to follow your dream during a pandemic what a strong story you have I do have a website it's RoxanaLabat.com and Instagram is where I'm most active on social media so you can find all upcoming releases videos everything will be announced there as well Mm, what can I do to help her? There we go. Oh, you can hear me now. I can hear you now. Okay, great, great. I was like, I can hear you. Okay. Well, How's it going? Jenny, this is Jenny Reynolds. Um, you're probably one of the first musicians I was privy to hear. Definitely one of the first female musicians I was able to hear when I moved here to Austin. So, and uh, and guys, we guy. really highly of you. I do. Tell us, what do you have rolling here during this pandemic? Are you writing and releasing? Uh, definitely writing, because I, I kind of write all the time. Uh, it just, I think things kind of, ideas sneak up on me and I just jot them down and sometimes they grow into things. So also, I definitely made a specific t decision to go ahead and release the CD because um, Adam Dawson at Broken Jukebox Media, um, who's handling PR and radio in the United States, um, we we 
we met in January. We signed our, you know, signed our little contracty thing in February, and then virus hit. And the first discussion we had was, should we wait? And I've been waiting for years. And we started recording this in 2012. Um, and I, I think you probably know some of the circumstances involved. Mostly, we just decided that after the pandemic, there's going to be a just a, a glut of people that were waiting to release music. And I've been waiting so long to release, I just decided to release. I mean, I think um, it's a good move. I think it was, because we didn't know how long the pandemic would last. I never thought it would be even now almost six months and it's gonna be longer. So really, I mean, I know that it wasn't as calculated as that, but you made the right choices as far as I can tell. I appreciate your saying that because I still wake up at night going, what the hell? I mean, I, I think that it was the smart decision because there's definitely going to be that waterfall of musicians putting everything out. And I mean, right now, I was just talking to someone in the music industry that kind of does big names. And right now is the first time in probably 20, 30 years where all the leveling fields are all even. Right now, even the big names aren't doing anything and people are listening. So I think it probably is the smarter move because you have all ears. You're not competing with Lady Gaga on her 14 foot Cheeto bag. I mean, you you can have that audience listen to you too. So I think it's smart. Yay, thank you. It's been getting good reception and I really like the record and um, it kind of changed me as a musician. I loved working with Mark Hallman. Uh, lots of other times I recorded, I wasn't encouraged to play guitar as much and I've been playing guitar for 40 years. so. I'm not bad. Good. Uh, You're really good. If I'm trying. I practice a lot. I really just love to play. It's fun, you know. Um, and I, I think Guy and I actually, I knew Guy before, but we met at Matt Smith's little circle of songwriter, musician people, and he played um, One Meatball, <laughs> uh, which is a little bit like um, 16 Tons. Yeah, you know, and it was just kind of fun to sit around and play. Uh, the trouble I'm in, I kind of got inspired to write it because Ray Bonneville has this song called jo "Run Jolie Run." Mm -hmm. I think on a record called um, "It's On Going by Feel," and I wanted to write a. I hadn't written a song about a criminal, and I wanted to write a song about a criminal, but I wanted to write a song where the woman was the criminal. Ooh. Um, so a lot of people get that it's a song about a criminal because there's a line in it about um, one of her victims, uh, the Lord made him thick so I showed him thin, yeah. which is like vernacular for a knife or a shiv or something. Um, what most people, I guess people didn't figure out is that the last verse I thought was obvious, but maybe, I don't know, it isn't. She's in a, um, she's in a prison cell with a priest. Oh. And okay. in the last verse, she hits on him. So it's, it's it. kind of... I'm going to listen to it thinking that. <laughs> um, what I was kind of going for there is that last moment with the priest. So either she's just in there with the priest because priests go to prisons to talk to people that are in prison, or she's on death row. And I, I'm not really, a, I'm not in favor of the death penalty, so I didn't get all, you know, lofty and specific about that because I, I just want to be a musician. I don't want people to get mad at me. Um, yeah. Or if you're gonna get mad at me, just be nice about it. Cause I'm just trying to play music and make a living and kind of make my heart happy. Cause my heart is not happy if I'm not making music. So all the things that I love with this tune. I highly recommend that, that you probably already know it. That song has just a, this incredible solo where I think it's him playing both the harmonica and the guitar. And the tone of the guitar is like, oh, I just want to sit down and um, be like, you know, photo his pedals and amp. Yeah, he and uses um, uh, he uses uh, hollow body Gibsons or Guilds um, like that, and uh, you know he usually uses a pretty powerful amp that's not turned up too high, so you get all that woody sound out of those um, uh, out of those guitars. And he's such a great harp player, and his oh my god, yeah, guitar is as good as anybody. Um, uh, and you know plays plays foot percussion 
at the same time, something I've been working on for a long time. Really hard. I've, I've really been digging into playing the harmonica on the rack in a way that I've never before because I've always wanted to play with people, you know, so it's, it's, a, it's a weird situation. This video of The Trouble I'm In is featured on my record that is called Any Kind of Angel, which was released in June of 2020. And this is a live version of the song, and I'm sitting in with the Purgatory Players playing uh, The Trouble I'm In.
that's amazing. Thank you. And thank, thank you. you for giving me another reason to play the purgatory players on my show. Cause anytime I can get those guys on here. Great guys. Great. Maybe I should do an episode just about them. That's a great idea. Drop you have track. another, you have another tune for us. And this one is um, called any kind of angel. And it is recorded at strange brew. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I had a gig there with uh, Scrappy Jed Newcomb and a cellist named Brian Standifer that you may know from uh, his work with Alejandro. Um, these guys, um, I'm sure you know firsthand, uh, the, the cool thing about playing with folks in Austin is not only are they great players, but they're also the nicest people. And um, that was definitely true that evening. It's true with the Purgatory players. And of course, Strange Brew is just such a special place to play. Oh my God, I only got in there once. Guy and I just started dating and I drove to Austin. I think it was the first time I brought Bella up here. And we got there and went in and then it was over and we left. I mean, I was in there for 10 minutes and yeah. that's the most I ever saw of it. Well, let's hope that, I don't know how Quax is doing, but let's hope that, uh, that they're gonna keep going because I, I don't know. I'm built on faith, and I'm trying to, you know, to put it in place every time, I, every chance I get with this pandemic. That if we just have faith that uh, we're gonna come out of this okay, and and some of the venues are still gonna be around, then we're gonna all, <laughs> we're gonna all be out every night for like months, maybe an entire year straight, just out hearing music and playing music and supporting venues and bars and anywhere that's hiring musicians to play you know and, and we're celebrating everybody's birthday too because everybody after march whatever 17th 16th everybody had a lame birthday so like you know or at least uh, i don't know how many zoom birthday parties can you go to you don't get any cake like birthdays have changed when i was little we we had like we did the eggs on the spoon races in the front yard and it was great yeah we played sardines and kicked the can and had and actually had cake like that. Yeah, you know. Tell me about any kind of angel. I mean, you told me it took a long time to produce. And what is the story behind this song? Any kind of angel. Uh, I think there are a few things that kind of inspired um, what the idea of what happens to a family business what happens to a family when the family business is hurt by something they can't help like nature like um if the family business is a farm which happens a lot um and there's a drought what happens to the family if the family business doesn't produce the income that the family needs you're out of income for that season and which is pretty much like you've probably already spent the money to get your boat ready to go out. And so you're in the hole several, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, you know, to, to try to make money on something that is entirely dependent on mother nature who can be fickle, which is the most polite word I can think of it. You know, I think also it's just when people are desperate, they will really take anything. And um, I don't think I had desperation in my life when I wrote that song. And since then I've felt what desperate feelings feel like. And it is that song. And in a weird way, I still like to play that song. It still makes me feel good to play that song. But I have to say, in retrospect, I definitely know what being desperate is now. And yeah, I, I take any help when I can get it. And I say thank you and give somebody a hug after because we're all helping each other to get through this right now. And we're all helping each other to get through what it's just like to be an artist and a writer these days. You know? It's definitely a, a song for the times and it and it was a song that was written before any of us even had anything like this on our radar so you know maybe it's just something coming through you that people needed to hear and uh, so this is this is any kind of angel
Promising you an actual, sending you a virtual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Absolutely beautiful. And it's it's kind of comforting to see Strange Brew, you know? Yeah, I miss that place. So if people want to buy um, any kind of angel, where can, they, where can they buy that? You can get a download uh, at Bandcamp, and there's a link. If you go to my website, JennyReynolds.com, you can cl click on music and there's a Bandcamp link um, right, pretty much right there. There's also Spotify, links to Spotify and um, Apple Music. So if you're the streaming kind, you can do that. And you can even get downloads on iTunes. You can also get a hard copy from Amazon if you're still getting hard copies of CDs. You can also email me and we'll work out an autographed CD for you. I'm selling a lot of those. I have a live stream every Sunday at five o'clock central time which is called Jenny Reynolds Rap Sessions. So I'm gonna play a song off of my new record, and it's called Josephine. It was originally inspired by the lady that cuts my hair. She um, told me that I brushed my hair the wrong way, which I didn't know was a thing you could do, but now you know. And she got really mad at me, and I, I went home, I was a little shell-shocked, and I went home and I was walking around the house going, don't be mad, Josephine. Don't be mad. And then a whole song came out. It has nothing to do with her, except that they share a name. And there's a brush. <laughs> also. Don't be mad, Josephine. Don't be mad. I never had all the things you had. A gilded mirror with a gilded brush. A hundred acres and a cop rush. Every boy. Well, I'd never mean to hurt you 
scary lady at the cost cutters. <laughs> So tell me about your release. And I know that uh, I caught part of your online um, release show. I know you had a little bit of technical difficulties, but <laughs> what I heard was great. Oh, well, that's and, good. I mean, um, yeah. yeah. Thankfully, I was able to actually do the show, but I had a, a, this whole thing planned. I was using some extra software for, um, which definitely required Wi-Fi, which I have every other day of the year. Just so it turns out, and I found out later that... Um, they had been working on the like main box at the street that very morning, that very morning, and accidentally unplugged my Wi-Fi. That, I had to go back to just the basics, which is just me singing to you. Which well, I, I mean, that's that's what we love. Well, thank you. Thanks. Yes. What's your favorite new tune? Definitely the title track, someday, maybe sooner, because it's just it's such a song. It's a song of hope amongst a whole bunch of songs about a breakup. Mm -hmm. And. And then I think Josephine is the other one because it's a fun little peppy upbeat song and uh, Rich Brotherton such, did such an incredible job with uh, the mandolin and making it sound so incredibly bluegrassy and that just speaks straight to my heart. He did a great job on that. Uh, someday Maybe Sooner. Someday Maybe Sooner and a, a record mostly filled with kind of the remnants of my last relationship. Um, I had this moment feeling like the song isn't actually about someone specifically the song is about someone that I hope to find who make who I know it's going to be an uphill battle for them because I have some pretty solid walls yeah. and yeah I've been growing them and like just adding mortar and <laughs> shit for years so it's going to be an uphill battle for that person but I want them to know that that I have so so much love to give and if you just, if you just hang out, just give me a minute, I will hopefully make it worth your while and I will give you my whole heart. Oh! 
Is it anything good? Oh, it is. Make them, oh, this is actually really good timing. Make them Creek Concerts. They're a house concert in, near Baltimore. And since I can't go and do one of their shows this year, they're going to have a Zoom house concert in about two weeks for me. Um, on the first, I want to say. Um, so me and you, you and I, us, together as two people, are in a band. Yeah, do we have a Austin. band? I mean, I think we still have a band, right? I think. I think. <laughs> Um, we're in the Honeysuckle Sage Riders with, should we even try to name all the 5,000 people I'm in the not, band? I'm not. I mean, it's, I, what is it, like 12 other people? But the, <laughs> the Honeysuckle Sage Riders is super fun. It is the 1980s and earlier country music. And I hope to be able to feature this, this, this group on the show sometime. Yeah. There's just so many. If we weren't in a pandemic, you have had a really rough few months health-wise. How are you? Yeah, it's been you? pretty bad. And I think in some ways it's good that it happened during the pandemic because it put me out of commission for a while. But I had a disease in my eye that caused all this damage and pain. And it's just gone on and on. And then there's concerns about immune problem, immunity problems because that's oftentimes what causes this. Uh, uveitis is what it's called. Very exciting to talk about all this, but that's what's been going on, and it affects everybody differently, and it just go, just doesn't ever seem to stop, and it's caused a lot of vision loss for me, which hopefully um, surgery can fix, <laughs> which is why I'm not wearing any makeup. I haven't done myself up for... Oh, um, you look beautiful. Thank you. Whatever. But yeah, definitely follow me on Instagram, Spotify, and Facebook. You can get this go to my website barbaranesbit.com uh, and get that physical or digital there and you can also get the digital or streaming the digital on all the places Amazon and Spotify and all the, all the things. I, coronagrams you can go to my website uh, barbaranesbit.com to find out about sending a video message to somebody you care about um, and my upcoming shows the next one being I think the first um, it's a Zoom show, which are great. Get to see each other's faces, and it's like the closest thing to actually having an audience and being able to get that. It's being a musician in this situation. It's like being a battery without an alternator. You know, you're just putting this out there, and but it takes getting any that feedback from you, whether it's visual or typing a comment. That is the alternator that feeds back into that battery. Hello. Hello. Say hello. <laughs> How are you doing? Come Say on hi, Phil Bass. Hi, how are you? This is the studio. Welcome. Thank you. I've got some stuff I'm going to grab.
for having me and I'm looking forward to seeing the, the show. Um, I was thinking recently about Shakespeare's line, watching the news and all of this terrible things happening in the world and I was thinking about Shakespeare's line from the Tempest that goes, uh, um, hell is empty and all of the devils are here. And I was just like, damn, that's right. And then I thought a little bit more about it and I thought about the people that I love and that love me and the people I've had the pleasure of knowing in my life. And I thought, you know what? I think heaven might be empty too, so it's okay, because the angels are here as well, and I feel lucky to have met a million of them. You just keep, try to keep the faith, try to keep hope and love alive through this very difficult time, and vote. Thank you for watching another episode of The Wednesday Show with Guy Forsyth and Jessica Bailey. It was such an amazing episode. We got such a great response. This is going to be just the first part of a two-part episode, maybe even more. I'm all about shining light on the females here in Austin, Texas, especially those that are not only female musicians and artists, but those that are purging ahead during this pandemic and putting out creative things even though our legs have seemingly 
been cut out from underneath us. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jessica Bailey. You can find us online. More information at GuyForsyth.com. There's also Guy Forsyth Band on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and also on Reverb Nation and Bandcamp. Thanks for being here, and we love you. Bye. What's in a name? What's in a home? Who gets to say where it is you're from? But nothing makes sense and everything stays the same. Yeah.